Hi guys and welcome back to a new Spring Boot Security episode. Today we're going to talk about SSL and HTTPS and how this technology can improve the overall security of our applications. Before we get started, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel in order to stay tuned for more tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Back to SSL, let's try to give a simple definition. Now, HTTPS is a combination of you know, HTTP transfer protocol plus SSL security layer on top of it. So we can think of HTTPS as plain old HTTP but it's an HTTP that delivers data securely between two endpoints. Okay, so it's the same old HTTP protocol that we know, but it has enhanced security when in conjunction with SSL. And basically HTTPS allows us to transmit information securely between two endpoints. Let's try to look at some examples. Let's say that uh, we have a user here, John, who's trying to access his mail server and he's using HTTP. So he sends a request to HTTP mymailserver.com. He enters his username, his password. Now imagine that between these two endpoints, between John and the mail server, we have a malicious user that intercepts this data in transit. Now, because the communication between these two endpoints is not secure, so it's just, ST it's just HTTP, then the malicious user can basically intercept that information and he can then do whatever he wants with them. So we can see here one big vulnerability of using HTTP for our application. So the data in transit is really not secure at all. <clears throat> now, if you use HTTPS on the other hand, then we have John, you know, he logs into HTTPS, mymailserver.com. He sends, he enters his username and password. Uh, we have the same malicious user that's trying to intercept uh, the communication between these two endpoints. But now instead of getting, you know, the username and password in clear, uh, the malicious user gets, you know, something like this, which is an encrypted version of that information. And you can see the difference, you know, in plain sight. Now, the user definitely can do nothing with this sort of information. So this is why HTTPS is really, really important for securing your web applications. Uh, you don't want somebody in between to capture the traffic between your customers and your application and extract valuable information out of them. Now, even if you think that uh, you're not sending crucial information, uh, it's still vital that you don't expose, you know, uh, those kinds of things. Cool. Now, how does HTTPS work? Well, this is where SSL certificates come into play. Now, you saw that in HTTPS, we have the information that is being sent is encrypted. And in order to encrypt it, we use, you know, a certificate. Now, um, SSL certificates come into flavors. The first one is called a self-signed certificate, which means we can create it ourselves on our machines. And this form of certificate is quite good for development purposes only. So if you want to, if you're just developing your application, you want to enable HTTPS and you don't want to buy a certificate right now for development, you just generate one yourself and use that self-signed certificate for development purposes. It's perfectly fine and acceptable to do this. Now in production, when you release your application, you cannot go with a self-signed certificate. You need to buy a certificate from a trusted authority like Komodo, Symantec, Digicert, or etc. And this is the recommended approach for production. So never ever uh, release your application with a self-signed certificate. You know, go to one of these trusted authorities, buy a certificate and use that certificate uh, for your app. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the differences between the two of them. So um, the, the web browser is aware if you have a self-signed certificate versus a certificate bought from a trusted authority. Now, if you look here at the first um, at the first line, uh, when you have secure HTTPS and a certificate from a trusted authority, you will see this green lock and you know um, 
uh, green lock that signifies that the connection is secure and that the application that you're trying to access is who it says it is. So this is a good indicator that you're at the right site. So if you navigate to a bank or if you want to make an e-payment, uh, I do look to see that, you know, the site that, you know, where, where I'm at uh, actually displays this kind of green lock uh, notifying me that, you know, I'm on the right site and that that connection is encrypted using um, a certificate from a trusted authority. And this is what you want your customers to experience as well. Now, on the other hand, if you have, you know, uh, if, you, if you're using uh, a self sign certificate, you will get one of these messages. So you will either get like a lock with a warning sign or a lock with, you know, um, a red sign. And this basically indicates that although we have an, S an HTTPS uh, connection, that certificate is not issued by a trusted authority and that, you know, your browser cannot guarantee that you're in a safe uh, uh, lo location. Okay, again, for development purposes, it doesn't really matter. But when you go in production, you really need to invest in buying a secure, you know, a certificate from a trusted authority. Uh, now that you know the difference between the two of them, let's take a look at the flow. So, how does SSL protect our information? Well, let's say we have a client, so a browser and a server, which is hosting our application. Uh, our customer is trying to reach us and he or she initiates an HTTPS request. Now, the server sends back the certificates or our, our application is aware of the certificate that you're using and we are sending a copy of that certificate with a public key to our customer, to our client. Now, the browser now uh, verifies the SSL um, and the certificate that he received. Uh, it verifies that it was issued by a trusted authority. It verifies that, you know, uh, our application is who it claims it is. And if everything is okay, uh, the browser creates a session key and sends that session key back to our application. And using that session key, uh, all the data is then encrypted between our customer and our application. Uh, and of course, you need to know that uh, your operating system has a list of um, trusted authorities that issue, you know, uh, certificates. So that's how your browser know how to display that, you know, green or orange uh, label in, in your browser. Um, this is the flow for HTTPS. It's a good thing to understand it because you need to know what's happening, you know, under the hood. So if you're trying to draw a line, I would say that uh, regardless of the chosen security config, regardless how you choose to create uh, authorization or authentication, uh, you really need to have SSL in place uh, for your Spring Boot or Spring application. Uh, we cannot talk about Spring security or about security if the data that you transmit or if the data that flows between your clients and you uh, is not encrypted. So really everything that you do is kind of pointless uh, if that data is not protected in transit. So please do use SSL, do it as early as possible in the development lifecycle, uh, you know, just generate a self sign certificate, then buy a new one for release and everything should be okay. And in a future episode, I'll show you how you can protect your application using your, your Spring application using um, uh, HTTPS and SSL. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.RomanianCoder.com Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.